Hi everybody and welcome back to EdTech Classroom. So teachers have been asking me this question over and over lately. How can I use technology to amplify student voice and choice? Google Slides is probably my favorite tech tool and more specifically, it's one of my favorite tech tools for amplifying student voice and choice. So for today's tech tip, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a choice board using Google Slides. Now I've created a template for you to use that you can check out in the video description down below. I'm gonna be showing that template throughout this video. It's what this video is gonna be all about, so be sure to click on the link in the video description down below to get yourself a free copy of my digital choice board. So without further ado, let's get started. What I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna walk you through what this choice board looks like. I'm gonna show you how you can put in an example of an activity that you might wanna do with your students. Then I'm gonna show you how to do some linking and then we'll test it out. So first on this page here, this slide here, it says choice board. So this is sort of gonna be the home base for students when they're looking at the three choices that they have. So you'll see they have choice one, choice two, and choice three. So basically what this means is that students are going to have three different choices that they can choose from. If we take a look at slide number two, you'll see that it says choice number one. So there's a place for me to put in the activity name or the idea, and then a place for me to put the description of the directions, and then there's a back button in the corner. For choice number two, you'll see again, activity name, description, back button, and the same thing for activity number three. So going back to choice number one, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna fill out this slide with an example activity. So for example, where it says activity name, I might type in read aloud and writer's notebook. And for the activity description and directions, I'll type out some quick directions. So first, listen to the read aloud video. Then in your writer's notebook, write three ideas you have for your school, for your dream school. So now what I'll do is I'll just resize this text box so that there's room for the actual video. So to add a video, I'll go up to this insert tab, then I'll click on video, and now I can actually search directly within YouTube to find a video for my students. So for example, I might say, if I built a school, read aloud. This is one of my favorite books, by the way. Okay, perfect. So let's say I'll just go with this first one here. Now I'd recommend, of course, that you preview the video, which we're not going to do right now. Um, but let's say I've already previewed this video. I think it's good to go. I'll just press select. And now you'll see that the video has actually been inserted into the slide directly. Um, so I can resize it if I'd like. I can make it smaller. I can make it bigger. And I think it looks pretty good. Um, so now the next thing I want to do is I want to actually delete this Bitmoji because I want to find one that I think applies a little bit more to the activity here. So what I will do is I will go up here to uh, my extensions and I have the Bitmoji Chrome extension, which if you don't have, I'm going to put some directions in the video description down below for how you can get the Bitmoji extension. So I'll just click on it. And now I will search for reading. There we go, I like this one. So I'll just copy the image. I did that by right clicking. Then I'll paste the image. And now I can move it down to the corner here. And I think that looks pretty good. All right, awesome. So I finished my first activity. It honestly didn't take me that long. I mean, this looks really great uh, and I feel pretty good about it. So what I can do next is I will want to make sure that I actually program this back button to link to the very first slide. So now when you actually download the template for this activity uh, in the episode description down below, I have everything already linked for you. So you don't even have to worry about this step, but I do want to show you how to do this just in case you're interested in creating your own choice board template that you can use with your students. So to link this, you have a couple of different options, but I'm just going to show you one. What I'll do is I'll go up here to this little link button. I'll click on it and I'll want to go to slides in this presentation. 
And I'll want to link this back button to the home page, which is going to be slide number one. Now I'll click apply. And so now this back button has been linked to the home page. Now I'll also want to do the reverse, right? So I'll actually want students to be able to click on this, click on this text box here and have it take them to the first choice. So what I'll do is it says choice number one, and I'll say read aloud and writer's notebook. And what I can do is I'll do the exact same thing. I'll just click on the text box. So I'm not linking any of the text. I'm actually linking the text box itself, meaning that if students click anywhere within this rectangle, it'll take them to um, choice number one. So I'll click the link button. Then I'll go to slides in this presentation. And you'll see on the left hand side here, choice number one is in slide two. So I'll click on slide two, then I'll click apply. And so now what's awesome is when I put these slides in presenter view and a student clicks on choice number one, it'll take them directly to the page with the activity and the description and the directions. And then when students are done, they can click back and they can choose to do more activities if they'd like. So teachers are really excited about this next trick that I'm going to show you. Um, I think most teachers, when they discover it, they kind of freak out because it's something that they wish they would have known for forever. Um, so first, what you're going to want to do to share these slides with your students is you're going to want to click the share button. And then you'll want to change it so that anyone with the link can view, not edit, but so that anyone with the link can view. Then you'll click the done button. So now that you've changed your sharing permissions, what you'll do is you'll navigate up to the address bar here and you will click and delete everything after the forward slash. So where it says edit, everything including and after the word edit. Then I'll type in present, okay? Now watch, when I click enter or return on my keyboard, it puts the slides automatically in full screen presentation mode. So basically what this does is when you share this URL, this new URL that includes the word present, when you share this with students, the slides will actually open for them in full screen presenter view. So if I open up a new tab, see how it opens automatically in presentation view? This is an awesome, awesome way to share choice boards with students. It's an awesome way to share your Bitmoji classroom or really anything that you want students to um, view full screen rather with, the, with you know, rather than with the distractions on the left hand side or at the top, I just think this is a really nice, clean way to share slides with students. So if I'm a student, for example, I can just click on choice number one, do this activity, click the back, back button, and I can do choice two and three if I'd like as well. Thank you so much for watching today's tech tip. I hope you enjoyed learning about how to make a choice board using Google Slides. If you haven't already, be sure to click on the link in the description down below so you can get your free copy of the digital choice board. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you back here next week on Tech Tuesday. Bye friends.